Five o'clock. Time to get started. I uh, appreciate everybody coming. I'm Thomas Stevens, the chairman of the Dillon County Library Board. Uh, been on the board for over 40 years and uh, enjoy serving the people of Dillon County in that position. Uh, certainly glad we have a good turnout from last today. We've been very anxious to hear what everybody has to say. Let's pause for, for prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for this opportunity to come to the Ladder Library and discuss this future. Lord, we just thank you for, for Mr. Andrew Carnegie that, that gave you money to build this library over 100 years ago. And we thank you for Mr. Frank McMillan, who is put the Loud Library in his will with a very generous uh, contribution and we look forward to putting his money to, to good use to serve the people of Loud. And Lord, we just pray that you would give us the, the wisdom of Solomon to come up with the right decision to, to help everybody in the community. And Lord, uh, again, we just thank you for all your blessings. Christ's name is. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have we have several members of the board. Uh, Gail Coleman from Lada, uh, Dick Graham from Lada, uh, Carolyn Lupo from, from Lakey. Of course, uh, Yolanda McCormick is our head librarian for Bill and Cat. We have Nancy. Takes attention from the Dillon Herald. Appreciate you coming to this. Um, we also have Miss Deborah Falk from Wells Fargo. You know Wells Fargo is administering Mr. Frank McMillan's will. And uh, Deborah, do you? Yeah, I'm in the corner because there's so many people. Hi, I'm Deborah. Go ahead and say that. Oh, did you want me to share a few now? Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. I think this is fabulous. I want to try and stand in a spot where everyone can see. Oh, can I just share that with you? Thank you. So my name is um, Deborah Falk, and I work for um, Wells Fargo in our Philanthropic Services Division. And so I have an, the distinct honor of working with families, whether in life or, or after um, death, to help bring their final wishes to life, their charitable wishes particularly. So it's not always final if it's in life, of course. Um, but to help be in to bring that to fruition. And so that's why I'm here today, and thank you for having us. Um, so as trustee, we're bound, and it is our duty to follow what, to Mr. McMillan's wishes. And so that's what we'll do, and I'm gonna, sh I'll share those with you today. And then I'm, ha I'm, I'm very, um, again, honored to be here as part of your meeting today to sit and listen. And really it's our job is once you all as a community make your decision, then we will look how it matches with the wishes of the trust and, and move forward in that respect. So I'm not here to, please know I'm not here to render any opinions or uh, one way or the other, that's not my role. And so, and thank you for those of us, those who I was asking questions to, because I'm just very interested and I, and I love knowing the history, the, the um, fact that this library goes back to, to Carnegie in the 1900s um, is really something special to learn about. So, so thank you for that. Um, I'm just going to, I wrote down some notes if that's okay to make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, so, so what has happened through this process as, as we're getting, I want to share that with you so you kind of realize this is, um, when you're settling someone's estate you may not be, you may or may not be aware of that it just, it's a process and it takes time. So I liken it to it's a marathon, not a sprint. So sometimes we want decisions to happen very quickly and in our world, um, of trust, it doesn't happen very quickly, but it's a very methodical process. So I want to, I say that up front to manage expectations too. So even if you all made a decision today, the money doesn't come tomorrow and buildings start the next day, the day thereafter, which I know you all know. Um, but the estate has been fully settled 
And so now we are able to move forward with yeah. some of you, I, I know, met my colleague Monica, may have met my colleague Monica in the state settlement. A couple people said they had. So she was on the estate settlement side. And so I've come in now, Monica's still with us, but it's really my role within philanthropic services to help manage this process of going forward with the trust. So now that the settle, now that the estate has been settled, what we do is we're opening up a private foundation that was the wishes of Mr. McMillan to have the funds held within a private foundation. So part of that, I'm sorry, I see your head peering around. So part of that is establishing it. A private foundation is is a type of nonprofit organization, so that has to be established. Tax tax IDs have to be um, gained. The IRS approves it. All this kind of boring administrative stuff, but that's what's happening right now with the trust. But as you are. You know, we have been talking to Yolanda and, and, and other folks to get us to this point where we are today. So things haven't stopped. It's not so much a linear A, B, C it has to happen to move forward. Some of these things we're doing at the same time. It, it could often take up to 26 months after um, settling the estate to establish the foundation. But we're doing, that was uh, um, settled last year and we're in the process of starting the foundation so we're, we're well within the timeline so please know we're, we're moving along on that sometimes there's a lot of question about what can or can not be done with the funds that mr. McMillan so generously um, is, is, is giving to your community and I thought if it's okay um, I thought I would just and I don't want to paraphrase I thought I would read directly from the trust the moments on TV show, but I thought I would read directly from the trust so you can hear really Mr. McMillan's words about what his what his intent was, what his charitable intent was behind behind where, why we're here today. So I, I just pulled a section of it that reads: From the principal of the foundation, the trustee shall construct and or renovate the existing public library in Lata, South Carolina, to create a reading to create a reading room containing children's and adolescent literature. The room and all materials furnishing the room provided by the foundation shall remain in Lata, South Carolina, even if the main branch of the county library moves to Dillon, South Carolina, or some other location. In the event no public library exists in Lata, South Carolina at the time of my death, the trustee may use the trust principle to construct such a public library. He, he further goes, um, I request a large oil portrait of me hang in the reading room or in the lobby of any new facility. And actually there is the oil portrait. As, um, as the case may be, beside the pictures of my mother and father, I own at the time of my death. The new room or new facility shall be called the Rebecca H. and Frank M. McMillan III reading room or branch if a new facility is constructed. And then there's one more paragraph that talks about that I thought was important to share with you today. In the event the trustee has property left over after constructing the facilities described above, or what I just read, the trustee shall invest such remaining property as it deems appropriate and distribute the income, therefore, at least annually to the public library in Lada, South Carolina, to maintain the constructed facilities and or to provide books movies, tapes, CDs, and other learning materials for children and adolescents. So that I could summarize by saying, so if after the decision is made to, as it reads here, to construct or add the children and adolescent literature area, um, if there's funds left over, then that money continues to be invested, and then income comes every year to the library to help the maintenance of whatever it is that occurred. So I don't know if anybody wants to hear that again or if anyone has some questions about what the intent of the dollars as stated in the trust are. I'd like to hear the part about constructing uh, a new facility. Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah, I'll read it again because I've read this like 10 times and I always like, I always like to reread it and I have the benefit of looking at it. From the principle of the foundation, so the foundation that's being created from, from the dollars being donated from Mr. McMillan's estate, the trustee shall construct and or renovate the existing public library in Lata, South Carolina to create a reading room containing children's and adolescent literature. Okay, that's what I want to do. It did not say construct a new library. 
Well, it does. It says yes, it if the there's no longer a library in Aladdin. Here, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be trying to do that part. It did construct a um, reading room in the way I interpret that, not a new library. If the fun, I'll just, I'll just look. Is it okay? I'll just read it again because I think it's it's worthy of that because it's a lot of it's a lot of language in here. The room and all materials furnishing the room provided by the foundation shall remain in Lata, South Carolina, even if the main branch of the county library moves to Dillon, South Carolina, or some other location. Which it's already done. Yeah. The main branch. The main branch is Dillon. Yes. That's my question. Okay, <laughs> that's me asking, not in here. Um, in the event no public library exists in Lata, of South Carolina at the time of my death, the trustee may use the trust principle to construct such a library. But this library is here. Right. Yeah. I, and then he requests the oil painting and the name. <coughs> so, if, I don't, oh, I think there's more people. This is standing room only. Again, my job is to share the information that's here. We, we look at it here. Our job is also, it's very black and white. If as a community, and this is where I'm going to let um, you all take it from here, but if there becomes something where there's a desire to move slightly outside the boundary of what is here, we as trustees are not at liberty to make those decisions, that's a decision for the courts and the Attorney General. This particular trust is, um, well, the library's here in South Carolina. The trust was filed in the state of Georgia. So we would work with both Attorney Generals. So I tell you that not to, to scare or just, I'm just, again, sharing the information and managing the time frame that it takes to do these things. Nothing is impossible, and, and I'm not here to say yes or no to anything, but again, just to let you know what that process incurs. What is the total amount of the trust? That's a good question. So right now, the trust is at about 2.2 million, and then of course there's um, you know, administrative charges that, that would be coming out of it, but also as the monies are invested, income is being, income is, is being generated at the, at the same time. So it's about $2.2 2 million. And that would be, um, yeah, all inclusive. But don't hold me to that. I can't give you that number as a certain because it depends once work begins what that would, um, mm -hmm. market goes up, market goes down. It's being invested very, um, you know, wisely and prudently. I mean, we don't see any reason why it would go down, but I just share that, you know, on any given day, if you your portfolios, um, should you have one, the, the dollars fluctuate. <coughs> Do I see a hand in the very yeah, back? I need to ask a in the very back, ask yeah, a question. Uh, is, are the funds <coughs> designated only for a room, or can it be used to expand the present <coughs> So what it says is shall construct and or renovate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To provide, which would mean it could be a reading room. To, pro to create a reading room containing children's and adolescent literature. <coughs> yes. All right, it mentions a, re a renovation. Mm -hmm. Does it say anything about preservation? It does not use the word preservation. Oh, well, preservation is something else. To keep something, if something from happening, to the, like insuring it and protecting it from floods mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or other mm -hmm. national, anything that might affect the future of it. We've had problems. Mm -hmm. I know you've had flooding, right? I think right? those problems could be resolved with $2.2 $2 million. <laughs> right. That's a, if what, what has to occur, as it reads today, is that, um, remember, the mission is the children's and adolescent literature. So if it were, if, and again, I'm speaking very hypothetically, if the argument was um, we need to ensure that no flooding occurs and we need to mitigate whatever that looks like um, in order to preserve the, the adolescent and children's reading rooms that are right here on this level, could that work occur with the, those funds? That we would, 
have to most likely ask the courts for their um, opinion. And again, I don't mean to sound dramatic or, or what, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but that's just the guidance of what we would need to do. So if an argument was made to do that, and that's what the community decided, then we would just take that request and move it forward and get an opinion. If they decide to, we decide to build a completely new building off-site somewhere else, that would have to go to courts, right? Correct. That would need to be um, the opinion of the courts. There would need to be, you know, arguments taken. And again, sometimes when you hear the word courts, I know when I st first started this particular work, I've been doing this for about three years, I was like, the courts, the attorney general, and I would just think, you know, Oh my God. But it really is just that's the process. So it's, it's more of a factual process. Wells Fargo as trustee does not have the authority to deviate outside this language. And so that's why we have to go for an opinion. So it's, not, it's not our place to make the decision. But I just want to, I don't want you to think we're being like obstinate or, or making, taking sides or anything like that. It's just that's the process. So the mission of a quick is the rating you said so the mission um, is the rating it, it taught it mentioned several times the construction and to renovate right. of a, a children a reading room containing children's and adolescent literature but it says obviously that's not going to take two million but it also says that the rest of the money can be used da, da, da. right say again hypothetically right. if i can speak hypothetically if the if it only cost a million dollars to to redo the reading rooms again, I'm just making making this up. And a million dollars were left. That would say in the foundation, and then <coughs> the distribution. A private foundation is required to distribute at least five percent of their income every year. That's that's a requirement, and so that distribution would come to the library. So then, then in essence, you would become with some type of um, I want to say income stream, for lack of a better word. So there would be so we have <coughs> trust that we that we um, manage where the donor has said I'd like my 5% distribution every year to go to XYZ Children's Club and so if their trust is let's do easy math and I don't do math well so if it's ten million dollar trust 5% of 10 million is 500,000 I did the math right so every year approximately five hundred thousand dollars would then be donated would be distributed that word distributed to that organization that's named in the trust if they decide here to enlarge this building move and purchase land with the land more land to expand and all on would that be covered because it cannot be expanded it has, without purchasing more land what i would say at this point and i'm not an attorney is um it it depends. Is the land being purchased to expand the children's reading room? If the land is being purchased to and to build a computer lab, is that again our world gets very very messy? Does that and children are reading on the computer? Is it a children's reading room? But I mean, then you start getting into all. You see how it gets kind of in our world a little messy. But it does keep things. You can't then say we'd like to build an expansion to have. Um, an author's lounge, you know, that's something that doesn't have anything to do with the, the children's literature and um, children's literature. So basically, if they want to build a reading room, expand, expand this building and all, they need to come up with a plan that gets approved before they, is that what I'm saying? Yes, the, yes, you trust. can, right. Because we need something approved by the trust. Correct, correct. You know, if it was just you were um, renovating well, then it still needs to be approved. How far those approvals need to go is dependent upon the request. Uh, at, at the risk of jumping ahead of whatever's programmed here, may we have a professional librarian explain to us what a children and adolescent reading room is in their language? Sure. I was like, who, who is that? Is that? <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I know I'm not a professional librarian, so I'm stepping back. A reading room 
would be a place that children could gather. Can everybody hear Yolanda? I, I talk kind of loud, so most people can't hear me. Yeah, a reading room would be a place that uh, it's hard for children here. Um, 12 and under would gather to have programs, that type of thing. We have a children's library that do those type things. This is usually the area that she works in, right down here, when it's not flooded. But uh, so it would be something like this, but it would be much nicer. So, so to ask the question then, professional librarians have a definition of what a children and adolescent reading room is. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Is, just for my own education, so is adolescent the 12 and under? Adolescent and children are 12 and under? No, adolescence is a little older. Right. Uh, the teen years are sitting in. Right. 13, 13 is, and 14 and 15 when you're talking okay. adolescence. Excuse me, is the uh, existing footprint that this building and the property are on, it, it doesn't, wouldn't accommodate any additions, or would it? That's not, don't mean to be vague, or vague, that's not for me to, I don't know that answer. That's not for me to say I'm not the, um, that would be from a, a building perspective. Well, it's not big Do you know the history of this, of this library? Just a little on the library. It has a great history. It's the oldest building uh, on Main Street. 19, 1919? Am I correct on the year? Yeah. No. Okay. 1914. And it was built as a library? Yes. yes. And the library was up there. Mm -hmm. That's the original library. And then there were some expansions in the 30s and 50s? Three, Three mm -hmm. expansions. Second one was in '39. It expanded down here and up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next one was when they bought the bookmobile in '82. They uh, uh, had this garage over there. Uh huh. And then in uh, '04, right, they before. added this other place. So it's two-story place over here. No, that was done in '54. No, where? Over there. Well, that, that addition over there was done at 54. Okay. Then it was totally renovated in 04. 04, yes, okay. correct. Yeah, that, that plaque I, um, that plaque I saw. At that time, the library spent a bunch of money, which uh, came from a lot of different spots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fortunately for, for us in life, uh, they, uh, the, <laughs> the generosity of Mr. Owen uh, taught a lot of life. His mother taught me in the first grade. Right, I heard she was a wonderful first grade uh, teacher. State funding gave us 150000 Donations of, of 50000 Rural development gave us 50000 Local tax, one cent sales tax gave us 150000 And the local geo bond gave us 250000 That's 600 oh, I was going to say thank you. 600 and, Forty and forty-five thousand dollars from that day. Yeah. And there's no. Um, thank you for sharing that because that's really important. There's no stipulation that <coughs> in in this particular trust that says there can't be additional monies coming in as well. So if there was, again, I'm just talking hypothetically. If there was a grant opportunity through, you know, some of those dollars that were available again. There's no, there's no, it's not prohibited that yeah. that couple million can be added to. You know, particularly around maintaining a building too, as, as somebody you know talked about. Can I ask Tom? Tom. Yes. Who's going to make the decision on what is done here? Uh, well, the library board was collecting the information from from the citizens and of course the county. County Council and and City Council to be involved in it. To what degree? <coughs> and why? Who, who makes the final decision? Yes, the will says specifically it will be in line. Oh yes, yeah. no doubt it's going to be in line. But is, 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 the, is the library board taking any steps toward doing anything? No. I think we just get a the information. When will, when will the board make a decision? Uh, when we feel like we have uh, all the information we need to make an educated decision. 
who is the ultimate? I, there was a question over here. I'm just yeah. translating through the wall. Who was the ultimate decision maker? Who who? How, how does is it a is it a county? Is it city? The trustees is it the board? The trust are in charge of that money. Right. Well, who makes the, who? Well, let me rephrase that then. Um, for who, final recommendation, who you a recommendation. Correct. And who has the authority to make that recommendation? Who's charged with making that recommend? You know, who's allowed to make that recommendation? In every community, it looks a little different. That's yeah. why. Well, I think the library board's going to be, you know, the final decision to recommend. Yeah. Yeah. To recommend. Yeah. But Did they recommend to the board? Recommend to the count to the city to the county? To, to you, your trustee. Okay, so the board, the library board, is the ultimate. No, you are the well, I know, okay, let, I, let me ask that a different way. <laughs> who do we listen to? <laughs> Maybe that's the way. I can't call you up tomorrow and tell you what to do. You can't tell me what to do, I'm sorry. I wish you could. <laughs> yeah, who's, who's, who's allowed, what, what, what government body, what entity is allowed to tell us? That's what we're going to do. The board's going to tell you what, what we'd like to do, and then you can tell us if we can do what we want to do based on that truth. And then who accepts the fund? The library board? I think the property is owned by the county. There's your county chairman right there. Hi, county chairman. <laughs> no, I don't mean to put somebody on the spot, but that's that's a question we're grappling with internally, you know, and we've 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 had some conversations with, and so we're just you know, is it you know, some counties have a um, some cities have a city council, but really the mayor is it's a mayoral form of government. Sometimes the mayor is a figurehead and the city council is, is the governing body. Sometimes they provide it to a, somebody the, the like a library system. The, the library is uh, under the uh, county council. It is, and, okay. And but the county, I asked our attorney, the county attorney, if the library board was autonomous, if we had any say so, or if it was this library board say so, that last, last Friday, he said, I'll get you the answer to this there. Okay, but that's okay, but that's, that's something that we're working on getting that distinction. And I know it's, it might sound like a little detail, but. <coughs> We don't know where that, you know, the library board may say to the county, this is our recommendation, then the county accepts it because somebody would ultimately, I hate to say, be in charge, but who's able to make that decision? This question That's may be best asked of Tommy. Uh, it was my understanding after Matthew and the flooding that occurred that there was a consensus that there, that the county had to do something about the library and the flooding situation and it was my understanding uh, through word of mouth that the county was looking at something and the money to do this along came Florence okay with a second flooding uh, and after that then much later a year later here comes the acknowledgement of this money, this bequest. Uh, my question to you is, was there anything in the works to repair and or replace the Lattle Library because of the two floodings? No. So that was just a vicious rumor then, May that there was, it was in the works. May I say something? After Hurricane Matthew, this whole place, this whole area down here, the sheep rock and everything else was torn down. We tore down everything here. We tore up the walls and everything else to try to put this back together because Hurricane Matthew was so devastated that we couldn't even use the uh, three or four areas here. Um, the, so, and then as soon as we got back, and our, our heating and cooling units were downstairs in the basement, and those had to be replaced to the tune of $20,000. This was in 2016. And the refrigerator over here flooded and it wouldn't work anymore. That had to be replaced and all of this stuff had to be replaced. The county spent in excess of almost $75,000 in order to recover from Hurricane Matthew. Two years later, Hurricane Florence came and did pretty much the same thing. Now, we didn't tear out any walls for Hurricane uh, Florence, thank God, uh, but we, all, we flooded at that time too. And you see what level we're putting things at? to try to keep it away from more. 
<laughs> yeah, the bottom it's shelves are the bottom two. shelves are not used. <laughs> if, you, if you can't see in the back, the, the bottom two shelves. It starts at my bottom. Uh, higher than that with those hurricanes. Yeah. Oh, my when, when when the uh, renovation, that main re uh, renovation yeah, with the monies, uh, happened, I'm sure they addressed and that was talked about flooding. Yes. Uh, were they just not able to accomplish that? What we is thought we had. And then, not only the hurricanes, we had a couple of floodings before we had those major hurricanes uh, that we thought we had addressed the uh, flooding issue. French drains were installed in order to keep the water out of the library. Over the years, nothing has worked. The water is still coming in. Well, the architect at that time yes, sir. Uh, should have uh, uh, researched it so that uh, if Whatever y'all did, we did, uh, it, it, it would have accomplished uh, the flooding problem. Uh, I, I just don't quite understand how you can spend that much money and then not help more than it has. Well, did they have a structural engineer at the time? Don't know. I don't think our architect was familiar with flood zones and stuff. If we'd, if we'd have got an architect from Charleston and Buford, it would probably been a different story because they protected those old buildings down there and it's flooded. Well, that's why I was talking about structural engineering. Yeah. Uh, does anybody yeah. know why it floods? I mean, water, but where, why is any way to get the water off? Well, this thing probably wasn't a half. The last hurricane we had, we got pumps in the, in the basement and had generators. The generators automatically come on when the power went out. But water was standing out there about two or three feet in, deep in the road, yep. and an 18 wheeler came through here, went about 15, 50 miles an hour, and it pulled a tidal wave up against the side of the library, and the chief of police saw it. Okay. It drowned the, the generators out. The sirens went off in the library, it ran, ran, ran for two days. Nobody came and checked on it because the Yolanda was in doing she couldn't get there because the swamp had flooded everything. Oh, well, Nobody well, allowed her had a key. But I'm, I'm saying, Buzz, why was the water in the road? I mean, is there ditches that now? I don't think the ditches are. That's the ditches uh, that are not I don't think they open up all the way, and this retention pond over here that catches all this water coming out. I don't think it you know, was holding the water back like it should. I might be wrong, but. Did anybody ever look into that problem? Yeah. There's a police engineer. The way totally the ditch is covered. Yeah. 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 And that is, they don't have any records of uh, easements and stuff. And when the county wants to help them and bring a track over or something in, you have to get um, all the individual landowners and get an attorney or something to get an easement so you can go across their property to get to the ditch. Well, a lot of these ditches have been tiled in. Yeah, they closed up. Yeah, they closed up probably. Building built on top of them. I don't think they've, they've ever seen a camera or anything down to really see what's in them. But when we get 18 inches of rain, the whole town is a flood zone. Yes. So, what are you going to do? Somebody on the ditch. I told them to come and out back by my house. And they didn't even want to come back and clean it out. Yeah. This may be old hat to, to many of you, but um, has anyone been in touch? with the Carnegie Ground Foundation itself, if it still exists, and I've heard that it does, mm -hmm. and if it does, knowing the age of this building, its history, whatever, they may be willing to come in too. Apply for I don't know if somebody knows some, something about the foundation. I don't. If you'd like, if, if nobody does, I'm happy to do that, you know, make that phone call. And then find somebody, you know, start asking the question of Carnegie Foundation. I'd be happy to do that. But that would be a value to them, too. 
I mean, then when it came time to, but if it comes time, if there's opportunity, you know, let me, I can do the research for you and find out so you're not calling all these different people and trying to figure out who to talk to. I'm, I'm happy to do that. And um, but when it came time to apply for dollars or whatever that funding structure, if there's possibility for structure there, that would need to come from the community. So, that's an that's so back back to what the good doctor left the money for what can we as a community do to present to you all that won't have to go to court can do you have an idea from listening to us what we can what we can tell you tell you the trust so that we can put into effect what his wishes were are and it's a good question. So the wishes as it stands here is, and again, renovating or constructing the children's slash adolescent, I'm going to call it a reading room, <coughs> literature, a reading room, yeah. Um, and what we would, even with that, so if that were the case, then we would ask for, for budgets because we can't just, you know, we, we need to account for the dollars. So we would ask for, a budget and and what it looks like and a, and a project you know time frame of, of what it looks like who's doing the work we're not the general contractor so we just right. want to make you know see what so we could get an idea of what kind of draws may need to occur um, so first I would say a decision and again I, I know this is probably not happening tonight so I don't mean to simplify it but a decision to what well, what is it that that's to be done and then how much does it cost? And that's something you're going to want to know too, right. because right. we don't want to go this route of asking for something and then it's cost prohibitive. So, you know, so it's four as, million dollars as a of hypothetical, million or you might want because to. I think that what I'm hearing is that if we come to the trust and say we have a space for a reading room, but we need to do all this flood mitigation, that that might be a decision for the courts. Well, for right. that, I would say ask us but, the question first, right. and then we'll say what right. we need to come back with. But, but as a hypothetical, mm -hmm. if the library board were to decide to uh, build an annex, and the architect that designed that could maybe make sure that it was above the flood level, um, and that the purpose of the annex was to provide a modern children's and adolescent reading room, then uh, are you of the mind that that kind of proposal would pretty much be? They can do I'm just going to say yes or no, but from what we know here, it, it sounds plausible. But I'm not, I'm not the final decision maker. It would be, you know, we could even do it in stages because it costs money to, you know, get architectural renderings, to get structural, structural engineers, to and, and two, figure out two million so, dollars sounds like a lot of money exactly but it's easy to blow through it talking and consulting and right so so we almost would say so if there what my if there was an uh, something an idea of we want to go in this direction does that seem plausible then we go get that answer because you don't want to go I mean you wouldn't want you to go spend all the money for something and then learning later that it wasn't possible so we can do this you know you see there's humans behind the vehicle so so we, we want to be able to have those conversations with you too so if you said can we do this and really the majority of the money is going again I'm making this up I used to do shopping center management it's been a very long time so in Florida so when I hear you're flooding I'm with you. I understand this but, um, but it's been a long time and I had a million dollar, a million square foot property, and people wanted us to build a culvert under the mall, which basically meant lifting up a million square feet, putting something underneath that would clean out the water before it ran into the bay. <laughs> we were like, no, it's never going to happen. You can't. How do you lift that building? So we don't know if you know. You may say, in order to keep this, to maintain the integrity of the reading rooms as we have them, we have to do some type of, and I'm not. That's not my area. The engineering to make sure that it doesn't flood again. Can that be used because now we're able to fix this reading room and ensure its integrity for the, for the long term? So we would, I would say, let's once there's a community decision before you go start hiring 
people that we go back to the trust, we go back and say, is this something, are we on the right track? Are we on the right, right. track? Or is it no way, no how, or it's gonna be 10 years tied up to make that decision, you know? Can, but, can we all agree that, that, that to cure the flooding would be the first, the first thing that we should do? I, um, and, and somebody said, a uh, uh, Charleston engineer, that, you know, that makes sense too. Uh, if, if we wanted to hire, or, or the board wanted to hire an architectural firm, mm -hmm. would this grant pay for any of our architectural grant? Would it pay anything toward uh, an architect and all coming in and designing plans and all? Or an engineering firm. Yeah. Okay, I will find, I will ask that question. So if because the board we, wanted to draw, get an architecture firm come in, draw up plans and all to submit to you, would that be covered at the cost for the grant? To submit plans for what? For what re, re, the, 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 the room. Okay. Well, what did they have to do remodel the building room? Would, would the consultants be covered? I think, I will double check that question. Also, we want to think about about how much that would be you know just again I can do we can do baby steps if you'd like let me let me confirm that and then because you want to make sure that it doesn't cost you know a million dollars to do the drawings but and then leaves a million dollars left for the project so I will, I, I will take that back here, not here, but connected with a ladder that is able to do that kind of work. I think from what was said in Frank's Realty, far more rather it be a ladder or certainly Dillon County if, it, if need be, than to go someplace. I mean, he wasn't looking for a Guggenheim. He was looking for a Lala library as we see it. We know that. If you have ever had your cheek tweaked by Aunt Rebecca, you know what she's doing. <laughs> 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 Aunt Rebecca. <laughs> Ma'am, ma I did not know Aunt Rebecca. But I am a nurse and I understand doctor's orders when I hear them and it seems like he left a pretty specific set of orders and it's our job to figure out how to implement them. <laughs> And I think basically everyone here, generally speaking, the big majority is wanting what he's what he wants. Right. Do you want me to turn that back over to the board? I got a question. We're going to give oh, okay. a to say. Okay. Yeah, this may be used just for the land for parking lot. Parking lot. It, in my humble opinion, the parking lot, I would always ask, but it doesn't specify a parking lot. That would be a little further out. That would be a little further out of the scope. That could be considered part of the renovation, couldn't it? For the children's reading and analysis reading room? I, I would just need to, I would need to, I would need to ask. I'm not the final, I'm not the one who can make that decision. It's my understanding the purpose of this meeting was mm -hmm. for the, the county board to get a feeling for what the uh, community of life wanted to do. That's the purpose of the meeting. We certainly appreciate you coming right, that's my and, and mm -hmm. explaining a lot to us that we didn't know. Uh, I would I would hear, dare say that if we can solve the water problem, and there, there are numerous ways of doing that. I am no, no engineer either. But uh, it can be solved, uh, and it just appears to me that uh, from talking with some of these people, all of them that I've talked with have indicated that they wanted the, the Carnegie Library to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. There's only four left in South Carolina. <coughs> Brothers have got, uh, parents got one, we got one. Plenty of parents got one. Somebody else out there. This is an awfully small room. If this is the room, we're, is this the room we're talking about? 
This is too small for children and adolescents, though. We're talking about this one. I think you're talking about adding more to the, the whole yeah, building. Right. Just adding on to the building. Yeah, but one of you the might, problems, excuse me, one of the problems to add on to the building is we don't own any land around the building. That's what I'm saying. Is purchase land with the grant the money. But I was, I was, I will tell you that uh, DeWitt Cohen and Ronnie Gardner and I went before the pool pool in Dillon. And uh, DeWitt said that he and John D. owned it together. And that uh, uh, their mother had told them never to sell that, that property. That's the big, the big uh, property, the vacant property north, uh, north of here. But she did say, the only person you can sell it to is the library. So, based on that, I know that it, that property can be bought and it's not included. I own the property next year and it can be bought too. I don't want to sell it, but I will sell it if it uh, benefits the library. But we do need some numbers to start negotiating. Yes, well, you need to tell me how much you'll, you'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so far to, to take back if I can make sure I'm capturing is one is to connect with the Carnegie Foundation and say hello we're here and this is what's happening you know I'll give them this is what's happening and is there interest or who would the, who would people from the community talk to so so you have a direct line um, and then a couple questions about the dollars of the trust. Can the trust pay for architects or engineers to submit, plan oh, submit plans for the reading room? Can land be purchased with the dollars? Can a parking lot be purchased? And then we wanted to see about um, flooding. To get, if there's flood. that's flood. That's number one. For yeah. the, uh, Does the state library board not have an architect that <laughs> we had a, we had a <coughs> that came to the meeting with Will Spargo and the attorneys, and he estimated that that re reading room alone would cost a million dollars. Is that a new standing room or remodeling? Or renovating. That's brand new. That's not renovating. No, that's new. That's new. Yes. Like an annex or something. Yeah, that's an, an annex. annex. Yes. An addition. Oh, okay. and because it sounds like what might help your decision is to know if there's something that can be done so wouldn't you wouldn't be holding your breath every time there's a storm that's that's it. because it sounds like even a storm without a, if you're like Florida it doesn't even matter if it's a hurricane or not we get the flooding you need um, to find out if it's possible to, to use those dollars because now we you know because the rooms are down the ad the adolescent and children's rooms are down on the level where it does flush so could those dollars be used to mitigate that flood or potential there. Well, if, if we don't do something about that, then we then they're just throwing good money after that. Right. Exactly, and we don't want to see that. And I'm not convinced that an architect is the proper person. I still say the structural engineer yeah. is going to be somebody, somebody that knows about those kinds of things. That's probably. I mean, I'm not an engineer, but I know I have French drinks at my house in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I ring, you're got to be something else out there. I don't know. I'm just saying, but that's not that's not my. Yeah, if we're questioning, questioning how much of that money would cover a renovation and what it would entail to add that room or make that room possible, if we looked at having to construct a new library, 
is that money not going to cover all, are there costs that we're going to have to cover in this county will it only cover that room is it going to cover construction of a whole new library that would have to be the question to include the reading room that would be a question that needs to be answered yeah. uh, because the intent is not the full library it's the, it's, room. The, it's the reading room but obviously you can't have the room just right out there but but I would just also say Stu, and this is me speaking personally from former lives is um, you know remember that it also has to be maintained I mean, I know exactly. that. I just, I just feel compelled to say that because we see that a lot. I do. I work with a lot of nonprofits, and they get very excited when they get a bequest, and then they do something big, and it's okay for two years. And year three, they're like, "Well, how am I paying for staff? How am I paying for chairs? How am I paying for supplies?" So that's just a personal to be mindful of. So something to take back to your committee is mm -hmm. Dr. Frank is kind of put us in a situation here. It's like giving the kid, so here's an extra quarter to get sprinkles to put on your ice cream cone. Of course, the kids say, well, where's the money to put a cone? Put a yeah, right, right, what do I put the ice cream in? So uh, it's great to have money for the reading room, but we've got to have somewhere to put it. Right, exactly. And then we, we don't want to add it on to a building that, you know, that's right. another half a million dollars worth of corrections that need to be made. That's kind of a situation, and, and then by the time we got all that seen about, we're kind of just about out of money. Mm -hmm. And then to just abandon this building and go try to build a new one, I don't think we're going to have any money. Plus, politically, that would be that that would be about the worst political situation mm -hmm. that could happen here in this area. So. Yeah. Can Can I say something back to make sure I'm hearing correctly? If that's okay, yeah. is it a is it a possibility of something to look into? I don't want to put words in someone's mouth. I just want to make sure I'm hearing accurately. That again, if we could figure out a way, if you could figure out a way so that it doesn't flood anymore. And I don't know, you know, modern technology, is there something that can be done? I mean, it's low, you're low. Um, that would so you would know if you renovated something in these rooms. Is that something that is, there's an appetite for in this room? Well, wouldn't it be I want to make sure that I take back the right call. Wouldn't it be prudent for the county and the town to work on the drainage, no matter what's good? It seems like that would be your first thing right there, for the county and the town to work on the streets wherever the problem is. It seems like that's a first step to me. I don't know. And if it's not our place to tell the county, yeah, but I know with somebody, right. I, I think you're heading down the right track to have an alternative. So if flooding were to occur from hurricanes, that the addition could, would not be affected by the flood, yes. where something down here was flooded, it would just be structured or something else could be put okay. down here to fill in this. Now, area. you know, I think about my old house in Florida. I had, a, I had they called them a Florida room, they called, you know, the, the addition that somebody put in and I moved it. And we knew every time it rained, it was going to, we were going to, you know, hurricanes were coming. I knew I needed to be ready with the wet bags. So we never paid. We never paid to have all that. It would have been a, a big job to fix that. We just, we didn't. Well, well, but, that but that's what I'm saying. We want to make sure that that's why I had, I made sure I didn't have anything good in that room. But it seems to me that the county and the town totally can go ahead and be totally. doing something about these drains back here that apparently aren't enough. Huh? If I can add something else just to kind of throw in your minds, if it's um and hypothetically the rooms are renovated and there's money left over, that money again stays in the trust. It, it's invested, it creates income, and then a distribution it comes to the library every year. So that's just something to, I'm not saying to do that, I'm just saying, you know, you don't have to spend, here's two million dollars you have to spend every dime. Well, that's all right. I, I, don't, it's, it's not all or nothing. Let's put that money that's going to come in if you have a situation where you have leftover and mm -hmm. it comes in every 
is there any stipulations on what we can do with that yeah. money? <laughs> those, those children, the children of Madeline. But again, think about it that you're. The little darlings might fall in the ditch and we might have to have. <laughs> But, you know, again, I do a lot of work with nonprofits, and after my shopping center days, I worked in nonprofits. I mean, and libraries, we know, are always evolving and changing. That's my just, just uh, I'm just uh, throwing it out there. Yeah. Carl, no, I'm not I just a minute not long ago, they were talking about there may be a long shot possibility of someone providing a matching grant for this. Oh, I don't know that answer. That would go into this. That could Is go into this. Or if anybody wanted to make it. If anybody wanted to match? To this trust. Would it be under the same rules as the trust, or could they have it? So if somebody so, wanted a match, so the, you had a benefactor who said, I'll match dollar for dollar, what the Frank and Miller Trust is doing. Somebody to donate to a trust yeah. isn't, they, they, if somebody's looking for tax benefits, that's not the reason why people always give. They get better tax benefits if they give to a public charity. So, and not a private foundation, well, it's a but they could match it through, and if there was ways to donate it to the town or a donor advice, we could help set up whatever that looked like. But I'm just saying, but somebody can match it, why not? The funds be limited by the, this trust. Say again, I'm sorry. But with the expenditure... Oh, no, 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 if you could get $10 million, if you could go with this $2 million, match it, you know, four more times, to have a $10 million... That has you. That could happen. I have to think there. You never know. The front of the facility. In other words, they match the room to say, we want this to go to the preservation of the present facility. Right. Okay. It doesn't have. And, and that's why you probably, the, the trust is not set up. And, and I'm getting a little technical, but the trust is not set up to be a challenge grant or a matching grant. That's not a stipulation of the trust. However, if you as a community wanted to go to somebody and say, we have those dollars and our, you know, our ask of you is to match that, that's fine. So just from a technical standpoint, this is not a challenge grant. So you would, if, if you only raised a million dollars and said the two million, we would not hold back. The trust will not hold back a million. Does that make sense? So I know it's semantics, but I just, that's kind of the world I walk in. A couple, of, a couple of things that maybe I understand. First of all, we need, with Buzzy's help and the town of Lava's help, we need someone with the political will to do something about the flooding. And, you know, we hear, we hear, oh, it's, it's a, a problem, we can't go on private property and all that. We need somebody with political will to do something about that and work together between the yeah, two. We're going to have, we're gonna have to get some engineers or somebody to study the system and tell us what we need to do. Well, because somebody, some dad, we might cause more flood. We've got to have a plan. And the second, second thing is, I don't think any of us are going to be in my mind. These rooms are not going to be the children and adolescent library. This room here, and somebody said, well, this is too small. I don't think in most of our minds we envision this room being, have lipstick put on it like a pig and calling it a $2 million room. I think everybody's vision is something, a new room, much bigger, much better prepared from floodwaters and all that. Much more serviceable to the community. Yes. So I understand that the last council meeting that we approved to buy new equipment to prepare ourselves for cleaning out the ditches around town uh, that should be coming in at some point. So once the town has cleaned the ditches that is accessible to them, then the county would have to pick it up regardless of whose property it's on. That water's backing up and causing people who don't live on a ditch like myself to flood. You know, I live on the end of Highland Drive and we were all, you know, four foot underwater down there from a ditch that butted up to the county property. The county blamed the town. Well, now the progress is being made and the town is or has purchased that new piece of equipment to start cleaning our own ditches out. So as far as the town goes, I guess on defense for the town, I was at the meeting, uh, now the county, whoever needs to speak to, with the political will, as you say, 
uh, to get on board and help us clean the rest of the ditches out because the water is flowing, but when it bumps, it's coming back into town. You, you got two problems, two ditches drain loud. That's right. One by the cemetery, one down by Eddie Rice. You go to the end of those ditches where they jump into buck swamps and the beaver dam is built in. That's them. Exactly the water right. cannot drain. You go to either one of those ditches right now, and there's three or four feet of water standing in them. The only way you're going to keep the water moving is to get the beavers out and let those ditches drain. And until the town or the county or somebody goes down there once a week and drain, kill those beavers out, they're going to continue to drain. There's a problem with drainage here, but there's also a problem with weather. I, I have friends who usually live in the Panhandle, and they live in the Panhandle area. And they live in the Panhandle area, and they live in the Panhandle area, and they live in the Panhandle area. Conway was an island uh, um, they're, they're probably, I think we should be realistically I'm 71 I'll yield it I don't think he's a lot older than I am <laughs> and, and, but I, and I, he never had weather like we've had now we never had the amount of rain we've had now in this part of, uh, yeah, the 500 year flood has been two, four year, two years apart Drainage can um, help and be ameliorated, but, but, but like this, um, I think we're going to have a war in this building for a long time, y'all. Well, Tommy, you're going to follow this truck out here where Oakey Point is. You ever see that flood and like it has in the last two hurricanes? The, the Corps engineers are looking at the Little Piggy River and stuff. So they, they're, they're blocking the, the water down in Marion County. The water's backing up. There's nowhere for it to go. It's if the dishes are perfect, but the one can't care at all. It's the beavers. We didn't have beavers in there 20 years ago. <laughs> beavers are in there now, and they're dams all along Buck's Passage, all the way down to the end. It's a little bit of river. It's a ball that goes to the All this discussion about water is good. As we were saying, the purpose of the meeting was to find out what we all were doing about the if it was so possible, I know these people love the library, they wouldn't be here. How many people here today would you know, like to add on to this library and put a nice children's reading room here to raise your hand? Anybody again? We get down to the lead grid. And like we said, we wanted to find out what, what you people wanted us to do about your life. So we can ask the question. Everybody wants to renovate this library, raise your hand. Everybody. Everybody, Everybody wants to, us to try to deal with a new library that doesn't have all these problems, <laughs> raise your hand. I don't think we have enough information, Tommy, to vote as far as related to this money. Well, we're, getting, we're just getting the information what these folks will us to do. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll deal with the money. Well, in addition to that, I'd like to add that Mr. McMillan uh, loved life. Uh, he would not have done it. He would want it to be in this Carnegie I respect it was when he was growing up. And that's, that's my thinking on it. The Carnegie Library has never put the addition fact. Actually, it has, but the basement is one of the original structures. Right. The basement, yes. Yeah, that's one of the original structures. Is this where they used to park the boat in Mobile? Yes, there's something about that. That's over there. That's over there, yeah. So, uh, so what is the feeling? So, what is the feeling of people in the room about providing an addition to this library that would be what Dr. McMillan is asking us to build. That's the only way we're going to build this library. Yeah. Well, remember, it's yeah. renovate we're or build. We're going to it doesn't do that. And that's the, that's the minimum we would do. Yeah. That's what he wanted. Yeah. That's what we that's what we. I, I was struck that there, there were a couple of young people sitting outside with their phones 
using the Wi-Fi signal from the library. Those are the people Dr. McMillan wants us to pay attention to. He wants us to think about the children and adolescents and the future. Just like when Carnegie built this library, they were thinking about the future. I noticed he did not specify how and where and when and anything but the library and that to him meant here. Now there are many ways that it could be saved and I don't know them to say or rattle them off. But you know yourself if you stop and think about it, there are things that could be done. Um, and uh, I do know that LaFon was absolutely right, and this lady, somehow we've gotten away from the first intent of his money, it seems. We're suddenly just building something really, really huge. Do we even have the people that would use it if it were huge? Maybe so, maybe not. I don't know. I'm just pointing that out. He gave so much money and it turned into more, which is wonderful. Well, we built a new library in Lakeview, so if something was done in Lakeview, it would be similar. That would be huge. It would be a Taj Mahal. It would be something you know, be I useful. hate to say it, too, but yeah. I would also say that I don't think he would be so happy about just a, a regular little house looking thing and be done with it. That's not right. Well, there's, he there's, was, there's he, a lot of things, a lot of things that got to be done. So, but he, he gave this much for this. That's, that's, that's what I think. If you want a little more, that's fine. But don't you think he would be happy with an addition to this library for a children's room? That's, oh, that's, 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 that's what I think. That's what we voted on. To say we agree with that. Yeah. And, and we yeah. wasn't yeah. renovated yeah. before. Yeah. 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 The whole purpose was that we had to lead the room to this building. So where does the go from here? From here, I mean, we've all pretty much had a consensus. But what are we doing here or there? But when we get down to it, where does it go from here? You said we have 24 months. Well, no, we're setting up. We need to set up the foundation, etc. So that that'll we'll do that regardless of what happens here. We'll move forward on that time where things are kind of having the same drive or two different roads going in the same direction. But remember, it can be renovate or construct. So I just, I keep hearing new construction, new addition, and I know I've walked around the property and I can guess where your property lines are, they're kind of tight. Um, so I just, again, throw that out there, but I, I think getting answers to some of these questions where, you know, particularly around the flooding questions, where if that can be stopped or, or you know mitigated everyone can feel better about it right that there's some kind of solution other than me going out with my shovel and doing something around the building um, that might help these rooms so I just again I'm not steering you one way or the other but I just keep hearing the word addition and I want to remind that it also says renovate well, you know do we have doesn't to mean that to stay in this room pardon sorry <laughs> Do we have to make a decision today? No. 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 We have gotten in touch with um, the Carnegie. Oh, no, no, no. That's why you gave me my homework. You gave me my list of things to do. Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> but we're going to call them because I think that is a really wise. I think it's a great question. You know, what's the worst I can say? No. Well, so we ask again. Seven take seven no's to get to a yes. Right, and I took pictures today too. So I'm gonna I'll share that with them. You know.
Because that history is, 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 is deep. Everybody's going about it. The history is very deep. There's not a question. Everybody's going about it. Everybody's going about it. Everybody's going about it. Everybody's going about it. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. 